you tweeted an article which I read earlier on, which has really broken down a lot of the things I wish that I could understand. Uh, Bridget Fetasy. Yeah. Um, and it's called The Battle Cry of the Politically Homeless. And what she says is that people who don't have extremist views on either sides of yeah. the spectrum or people who just aren't bothered about politics kind of get lambasted as being these wasteful, but what is it, a cook servative? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and a, a waste of a vote. And then on top of that, anyone who is but is moderate, yeah. anyone who has a slightly nuanced view, yeah. just gets sort of thrown to the wayside. And I think that with Titania, what you're identifying is that the people who are at the absolute extremes, yeah, exactly. that's, it is funny for that reason, that people can identify, well, most people, the vast majority of people, yeah. can't identify with them at all. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the, um, I only read that article this morning. I think it's a great article. Amazing. She's brilliant. She's an American comic. Uh, who has had a lot of flack for just being honest about her opinions. Uh, and her opinions, as far as I can see, are not particularly controversial, you know. Um, nevertheless, um, yeah, she's talking about that idea that there's an expectation now that you should be politicised. Taylor Swift got, do you remember she got so much flack for not condemning Trump? You know, and it's like Taylor Swift's silence is deafening. So I don't need to know Taylor Swift's opinion <laughs> on politics, I'm frankly. I'm turning to Taylor Swift for political advice. It's like yeah. when Little Mix tweeted about the bombing of Syria. <laughs> <laughs> they sent an apology saying to, oh, we're so sorry to the people of Syria. I, I bet the people of Syria were thinking, great, thank God, at least Little Mix have got our back. Well, I don't give a, look, I'm not saying these people shouldn't have a, the right to have an opinion. Of course they do. But I don't give a shit what, Sy- what Little Mix think about Syria. Yeah. That's not their, le- that's not their expertise, is it? No, <laughs> not at all. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, so there's this expectation. But also what, what Bridget's talking about in that article is the way in which um, actually... Because if you express an honest opinion and then you get this kind of barrage of hatred off the back of it, it means that people are becoming nervous about just being honest. So you, the, 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 the discourse is dominated by the extremes. So you have the, the woke left who, who are really myopic and just uh, cannot see beyond their own very narrow sort of parameters. And if you step outside that, particularly if you come from the left like I do, and you step outside it just a little bit, you are the most, you're the persona non grata. You're the, you're the one they attack. Pushed straight down the yeah, hill. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and so it's people who have moderate views, people who just want to have a discussion about some of these difficult issues, they want to address the nuance of, say, the trans debate. Um, they will just be, uh, lambasted as bigots. Because the big irony with this is these people don't know what the word bigot means. I mean, the definition of bigot is someone who is incapable or, or, or completely intolerant of anyone else's opinion, someone who has a different opinion. Mm. But they, the people, so nine times out of ten, anyone who calls you a bigot is normally the bigot. Because <laughs> what they're saying is your opinion shouldn't be allowed. Yeah. Uh, it shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't have to, it shouldn't be tolerated. So, yeah, it's a real problem. Bridget's been on the receiving end of it. Um, a lot of us have now. And of course, what happens as well is if you express an opinion that isn't within that Overton window of acceptable thought, um, People just say, well, you're being dishonest, you're being a provocateur, you're being a shock jock, because it's a kind of narcissistic worldview that I can't believe that someone else would have a different view than me, therefore, this must be a lie. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, my, 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 I suppose my guiding principle uh, is just to tell the truth, say what I think. Yes. Uh, and see what happens, mm-hmm. right? And I, if everyone did that, can you imagine... We'd be, in a, we'd be in a much better position, wouldn't we? Yeah. Well, the, the, you know, Jordan Peterson, who is a, a fan favourite of the show, um, he, his first rule, tell the truth, or at least do not lie. He makes the point in his book about this, actually, that it's actually very self-destructive to be dishonest. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when I read that, it really chimed with me. I think that's absolutely right. The, the, you're hurting yourself yeah. if, you, if you're dishonest. Um, and he also makes the point that absolutely there are times when lying is actually the compassionate thing to do, mm. right? Fine. Um, but actually there's a way to do just evading the truth as in you don't have to lies of if, omission not lies of commission yeah yeah if, if it's for a compassionate reason yeah. that make that makes sense to me um, but I think when it comes to just expressing your opinions and views it's all about respecting people enough to tell them the truth as in I, I, I can respect you I can say something that I think you might disagree with because I respect you enough as a human being not to that I assume you're not going to start throwing things and call me a Nazi, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to have a debate and you're going to have a discussion. Yeah. It's actually really disrespectful to say what you think the popular viewpoint is uh, just for the sake of other people's uh, um, sensibilities. Mm. That's actually very disrespectful to them because you're patronising them. Mm-hmm. You're infantilising them. You're saying that you wouldn't be able to cope with dissent. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a bit like being at school. You know, when you're at school, like it's a particular thing with boys at school is that you won't say an opinion unless you're sure everyone else 
agrees, holds right? It. Yeah. Right. Uh, and sometimes you'll, you you this happened to me all the time. You must have had to like, when you were a kid and someone said something and everyone was like, oh no, we don't think that, do we? Yeah. No. And then it's like, oh, no, I didn't mean that. I, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. I actually saw a stand up doing a bit about this this year where he's talking about, he, when when a, a situation arises in the news and he he offers an opinion a bit too early when it's not formed and then he's like oh no can I take that back right yeah. and which is what teenagers do this isn't a teenage act by the way but it, but that's what teenagers do and it's that thing of well actually we'd all be better off being honest it'd be, it, it, we'd know who we were voting for we'd know what people think and we'd know where we stand mm-hmm. we'd have our views challenged there's all sorts of reasons uh, why honesty is a good thing. But no matter how many times I say that, it doesn't matter. People just say, yeah, you're lying. You're, you're just lying because you want to cause trouble or whatever. And, and that's really sad. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.